Hey everybody, welcome back. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button below, hit that bell notification if you want to be notified when Steve reviews a new classic movie. And now, let's go see that incomparable Steve Hayes, the tired old queen at the movies. Oso, you coming? Johnny, Thanksgiving! Welcome to Tired Old Queen at the Movies, come on! Johnny, happy Thanksgiving. I thought this year we'd go a little bit in a different direction. So I said to heck with Thanksgiving, let's do Agatha Christie's Death on the Nile with Peter Kristinoff, Betty Davis, Angela Lansbury, Maggie Smith, Jack Warden, Mia Farrow, Simon McCorkendale, Lois Childs, and directed by John Gillerman. Now, this was a follow-up, basically, to the hugely successful Murder on the Orient Express, which we did a couple of years ago. Sidney Lumet's all-star, glamour version of Agatha Christie's whodunit, Murder on the Orient Express. Basically, the plot is this. There's a wealthy heiress, played by Lois Childs, and she has a cousin, played by Mia Farrow, who is about to be engaged to this man, Simon, played by Simon McCorkendale. Well, she steals her cousin's fiance away and marries him. And they go on a honeymoon cruise up the Nile River. And her cousin, Mia Farrow, fo doggedly follows them at every inch of the way. It, it's just a presence the whole way, driving them crazy. What the hell are you doing here? Seeing the sights, like yourselves. Also on this cruise are various nefarious characters who have had bad dealings either with the heiress or with her no-account father. Look, Lynette's no fool, Pennington. Neither am I. It's a prime setup. They're on this steamer headed up the Nile to all of these famous sites, and there's multiple murders. And finally, it's all solved by the presence of Agatha Christie's most famous detective, Hercule Poirot, played this time by Peter Ustinov. My name is Poirot. Hercule Poirot. Ah, oh, the famous Monsieur Poirot. I grovel in mortification. Now, they had offered Albert Finney, who played the role and was Oscar-nominated in Murder on the Orient Express, the chance to do this, but the makeup hurt his face so much that he thought, under the heat of the Egyptian sun, it would be just too much, so he stepped down. Train sick or something? Some of us, in the words of the divine Greta Garbo, want to be alone. So they decided to go with a lighter, more jovial approach. Salomon les vacances, mon ami. <laughs> oh, like yourself. <laughs> yeah. Now to round out this cast, one of the characters is Mrs. Van Schuyler, played by Betty Davis, who's a dowager who has a love for jewelry, and reads about the heiress on her honeymoon and, and looks at the pearls in the picture and says, I think we should go down the Nile. How would... A little trip down the Nile suit you. Her assistant is Maggie Smith, is Miss Bowers, who is just a curmudgeon. And she'll say, There's two things in the world I can't abide. It's heat and heathens. Good. Then we'll go. Bowers, pack! <laughs> Poor Bowers is dragged off to Egypt. They shot this whole thing on location for seven weeks in Egypt. They had to shoot everything before noon because by noon the degrees would raise to 130 degrees. Oh, no, no. Can you shoot? I thought you're right. Yes, I could do with a change of shirt. So their call times were always 4 a.m. and they shot till noon. The roasting afternoon sun may do wonders for those uh, jaundiced jowls of hers. Right away, madam. Right away. This movie was shot by legendary cinematographer Jack Cardiff. It is gorgeous. He had won the Academy Award years before for shooting Black Narcissus, and he had the most sumptuous photographs of all the locations that they went on for this movie. And along with the combination of Anthony Powell's fabulous costumes from the 30s, it has a real 30s feel to it. The characters are hysterically funny. The screenplay was by Anthony Schaefer, who wrote Sleuth. This would be the first of three that he wrote after for the Agatha Christie series. And it's just great lines. Like, Angela Lansbury plays Salome Adeborn, who's this drunken author of raunchy novels and has depicted the heiress in one of the novels, and she knows it. Frozen enigma turns to incandescent light. 
love as this young English girl from Hazelmere, scarcely out of school. She gets drunk at this bar at one point and she says, Here, barman, this crocodile has lost its croc. <laughs> it's got great moments. Each character has a wonderful thing. What nonsense, just because you've got a grudge against her, or rather her father. No need to be uncivil. Grudge? Malouish Ridgeway ruined my family. And Betty Davis goes, well, you should be grateful. If he hadn't, you'd have missed the opportunity of working for me. Could kill her on that score alone. <laughs> She's always dragging Betty up. You bloody old fossil. Jack Warden plays the German doctor. I say you're a quack. Fraudoyer. What's more, you're a dangerous quack. Now listen to me. And the heiress says, you, you performed horrible experiments on my friend. I prescribed the course of armadillo's urine. Yeah. I had used it previously with great success. She went barking mad as a result. He said, well, uh, you know. <laughs> So they've all got motives. The thing around Agatha Christie that I always love is that it's not about just murder. It's about psychological motive. Who had the motive to do it, you know? And this one, it all leads up to the typical Agatha Christie moment where they have a denouement. Do you think he'll ever forgive me? It's more than likely. It's been my experience that men are least attracted to women who treat them well. The other thing that was going on when this was filmed on location, they, they suffered a lot. Betty was filming a movie, a TV movie called The Dark Secret of Harvest Home, and she had to rush right from that to Egypt. And the director was a fool, uh, John Gilderman, and when he met Betty Davis, he said, well, I hope you've memorized your lines. Mm. And that was like one of the worst things you could say because Betty Davis prided herself on her professionalism. That was a big deal with her. So she didn't really trust him after that. But she later said in memoirs, she said, Peter Hustonoff and David Niven were hysterically funny and Angela Lansbury, she said, I laughed through the whole thing. And I shall teach you to do it richly, as it was done in old Spain when it was known as the Chica. That is to say, with a sensuous erotic dash. David Niven's daughter, when they went back to England to shoot interiors, but David Niven's daughter was in a terrible automobile accident in Switzerland, and so he was under a lot of pressure, and you would never know it, and he was flying. He thought she was going to die, and he was flying from London to Switzerland every single weekend to be with her. Uh, Maggie Smith and he had just played husband and wife in Murder by Death, where they play a takeoff on the thin man Nick and Nora Charles, you know. Actually, he's going through his final moments of death. What could it mean? It means dinner, sir. We have no gong. And Maggie Smith has a line. She says to him, uh, uh, um, she says, Where's my dickie? I'm sorry, where's my husband? <laughs> so they got along very well. They had throwaway lines and they got along very well. But he did not get along with Olivia Hussey, who had played Juliet in Romeo and Juliet. Olivia Hussey lived in the cabin below Betty and played loud music all night. How could I possibly have done that? And Betty thought, she was terribly rude to me terribly roots. I think you're horrid. You pretend to be so kind and considerate and all you want to do is trap us. But uh, Angela loved it. And Angela won the, in the National Board of Review for Best Supporting Actress. Betty desperately wanted a third Oscar. She and she, because Ingrid Bergman had won an Oscar for Murder on the Orient Express, Betty Davis thought for sure she was going to get nominated for this part. And it was really Angela Lansbury who got more notice acting wise. Oh, the cream pus, you know. The primitive instinct to kill, so closely allied to the sex instinct. <laughs> um, but I think that the great performance in this movie is Mia Farrow. Mia Farrow is phenomenal in this part. One must follow one's star wherever it leads. Even to disaster. Even to hell itself. She never got the recognition that she should have, especially with this and later on with Broadway Danny Rose and Purple Rose of Cairo. She, she was such an underrated actress, always has been. But I think that you are going to love going on a Thanksgiving cruise with Betty Davis, Angela Lansbury, Maggie Smith, Jack Warden, Simon McCorkendale, Lois Childs, Mia Farrow in Agatha Christie's fabulous Death on the Nile. Let's all go to the All these classic locations. They went to the pyramids, the Sphinx, you know, and they would get to the top and, and people would pick boogers and eat them. And a lot of times they were hungry on this show. <laughs>